Alright, three, two, one. Welcome, everyone, to the Tethered Shipyards. I am Takeshi Yamato, the Yard Master, joining our host, the House Good Gamer. Next starship up the tech tree in the Interstellar Concordium. Today we have the Dreadnought. The largest, most powerful ship of the its age for the Interstellar Concordium. Yeah. As usual, we don't know when this thing first entered service, so uh, we are counting it as 2287 General War, latest and greatest technology. You know the drill. By your command. Of the poster ships, this is probably the most famous. Mostly because the first, one of the first interstellar Concordium ships encountered was a dreadnought. Captain Sulu managed to destroy one with a little bit of help from the flight of Wraith class fighters. Okay, nice. Of course, the ISC did not appreciate this. Not that anyone cares. Yeah. That said, the ISC did manage to do something incredibly stupid. Tactical, charge all weapons. Uh, what did they do? Oh yeah, they pulled the celestial being. I just spawned a mirror universe star. Oh, they opened a hold of the mirror universe, and uh, that was Terran. That was a massive thing. In, uh, Tactical, charge all weapons. SFC one. Yep. Oh, Another. Ah, so they opened. So they opened a hold of the mirror universe, and. Did not go well. Get us in order. And while these were the heaviest ships they could afford to make, there was a slight problem. Everyone else was making bigger, meaner ships. Which these could not stand a chance against. Well, they had a decent chance of actually doing some damage, but they sure as hell were not going to be surviving. Yeah. As an example, the Kaelas Battleath class. Ah, yes. That one. The Klingon, the Klingon Super Dreadnought. Well, Super Battleship. It did yeah. not end well for, for any ISE ship to run into the original ship. <laughs> yeah. And when the Hydrant started going, hey, we have fighters, have a fun day with that. <laughs> well, yeah. the ISE had to really hastily yes, come up with a countermeasure using the Dreadnought Hall. But we'll get into that later. Yeah. So, as with most other interstellar Concordium ships, the Concordium itself probably doesn't have very many of these left. Oh, they, licking got, its... oh, they got their asses kicked. Yeah. There's only It'll... one confirmed Dreadnought still around. Everything else? Littering the... Battlefields of the General War, waiting for entrepreneurial businessmen <coughs> to find them and to uh, salvage them. Either for profit, I either for parts, or to actually refurbish and put into service for independent use. Though these would mostly be like bolstering a mercenary navy kind of thing. Because I do not see someone 
taking an I, I taking this old dreadnought and turning it into a cargo hauler. And I also don't see it going up against oh a galaxy class starship and winning. Agreed, but uh... and I sure as hell don't see it winning against an Audi. Yeah, but I mean, if you're just wanting to fend off against, I, but if you're wanting a mercenary, if you're wanting a ship to, if you're wanting a salvaged ship with modern-ish tech to go up against, say, pi pirates or something like Orions or Nausicaa's, I could see a refurbished ISC dreadnought doing decently. Though not yeah. I really wish this faction was playable. Yeah. The Terrans. Anyway. Yeah. I want to play with All right. stuff. Yeah. Alright. Let's get to the stats. As with the Star Cruiser, we figured this out mostly out already. So. Systems values are comms 9, computers 7, engine 7, sensors 9, set structure 8, weapons 10. Yes, I did say engine 7. The Interstellar Concordia may be like Starfleet and focus on engines and sensors, but this thing is sluggish. Yep. Department values are command plus two and security plus one. Again, command ship, and it also packs a fair, fairly decent punch. Weapons are disruptor banks, disruptor cannons, plasma torpedoes, a heavy plasmatic pulsar device, and a strength five tractor beam. The heavy plasmatic pulsar device is. I, he used he, and the plasma torpedoes are hyper-focused plasma torpedoes again, red death torpedo and the heavy plasmatic pulsar device is the same as the regular PPD except the damage modifier the stress rating goes up to scale plus security plus two instead of plus one it is foolish to resist Speaking of special, speaking of special rules, it has those hyper-focused plasma torpedoes, the heavy plasmatic pulsar device, and a subspace jump drive. And I think you said this thing could also generate rifts. I just showcased that, didn't I? Yeah. So interspatial rift generator. Interspatial rift. Generator. I'm not sure quite how to stat that thing, so we'll just we'll just leave it there. Spawns a mirror universe version. Spawns a mirror universe ship. Well, I'm not I mean, sure. The Terran Empire was kind of all over the place. Yeah, they're not I, the Federation. They don't do yeah. things. Yeah. I, I, just, it's something that tears open a rift to another universe. If someone has an idea for how to, uh, t how to, well, you could make it random. I mean, we're going to be making non-track ships eventually. Yeah. So, I, I'll just let's just say it opens up a rift to another universe where another ship can come out. It doesn't have to. the The rift could be used for travel in the other direction. I'm just not sure what kind of... Let's see. Um, well, we do have plenty of universes to play with. Yeah. Use... Activating this device requires a... Sensors plus science. A, a, a reason... Plus science task with a difficulty of, we'll say four. Uh, no, three. Difficulty of three. The mirror universe is never a good idea. 
Yeah, this difficulty of four is screwing around with any universe. Uh, screwing around with multiversal shenanigans of any kind should be hard. Activating this device requires a recent plus science task with a difficulty of four, assisted by the ship's sensors plus science. If successful, generates a portal into another universe which lasts for about five minutes. Ships from either beginning station construction at your service if it's successful it generates spell check if ships from either side of the portal may pass through during this time power all right Talents currently have command ship, secondary reactors. Should we give this thing electronic warfare systems too? Most likely. All right. So jamming somebody's uh, targeting sensors is probably going to be necessary for something this big. Electronic warfare systems and. It is foolish to resist. <sighs> Let's see, so we can open up these Electronic warfare system, secondary reactors. Um, Holy plasma. Do we want to give this thing advanced shields? Advanced for the time. <laughs> yeah. It. it it basically advanced shields just increases the amount of shield by five. As I said, shields are your hit points, so... Advanced shields. So this thing will have five extra shields. Not that it'll help against anything from the 24th century. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Alright, so advanced shields, command ship, electronic warfare systems, secondary reactors. Alright. And, of course, descriptor trait, as it has been for all ISC ships, is Interstellar Concordium Starship. Though you can substitute this with whatever Starship trait you want if you're going with a salvaged version. <laughs> Though in this case it would just be X-ISE warship. Yeah. That is the, all right. And that is Mighty Dreadnought, I believe. Yep. The biggest, most powerful interstellar Concordium starship available. But Though, last. yeah, and it still didn't really handle ha it hold up well to the big ships of the other factions. But as Ron said, we have one more ship to cover. Bye bye.